Uh, next, we're going to hear for, from Venzoir Pharmaceuticals. Uh, we have Dr. Stephen Pandall, who's the President and Chief Medical Officer. He's also a Professor of Medicine and Director of Basic and Translational Pancreas Research at Cedar sinai Medical Center. Uh, we also have Terry Brueggemann, the Chief Executive Officer. Thank you. Thank you, Rick. Thank you, Eric and uh, Matt, for organizing this, and thanks to the National Pancreas Foundation and the APA for putting this on. This is a, truly a, 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 an initial event, but an important and profound event for the field because we are actually a small group, as was mentioned before. So uh, what, we're, what Terry and I are going to present today is um, our company's goals to develop therapeutics to stop pancreatic cancer tumor growth and metastasis. Um, you, you heard some of the uh, statistics about pancreatic cancer, uh, where the survival is uh, relatively low, as indicated in the first bullet point. Uh, the therapies that we have, uh, of the various therapies we have, really only surgery has a, a long-term uh, survival effect. Uh, most of the, uh, chemo all the chemotherapeutic agents have uh, only a, an increasing duration of survival, but not a sustainable survival effect. Uh, the current standard of care includes uh, gemcitabine and abraxane, and the response rates are about uh, 25%, uh, and that is um, um, changing uh, uh, the progression of disease by 5.5 uh, months. Um, the, the cost for 3.4 months of treatment is, runs at around $118,000. What I'm going to focus on um, is the key problem with this disease. One is, is that it uh, becomes very metastatic early, um, and uh, those metastatic uh, cells are resistant to chemotherapy. Uh, so what, what we've developed uh, is an agent we refer to as AP001, uh, designed to address two uh, can pancreatic cancer pathways. These are also present in other cancers, but definitely prevalent in pancreatic cancer. One, as you see in green on the left, are histone de deacetylases, and on the right, uh, glycogen synthase kinase 3 beta. Each of these enzymes, uh, again, is overexpressed in this cancer, but furthermore, they have many downstream effects that we find um, are involved in both tumor growth on the right-hand side and metastasis and resistance to therapy on the left side. So, as the slide shows, um, these agents have effects uh, on metastasis and resistance to therapy as well as growth. What, what we found initially through experiments in animals using genetic models of disease is that when we combine drugs in these classes, uh, as well as genetic experiments, we found that you could get a synergistic effect on both growth of the cancer as well as metastatic uh, behavior. Uh, so what we did is we worked with medicinal chemists to design a series of, of molecules that, that maintain the pharmacophores of both kinds of drugs. And, we, and, and among the um, 20 or so agents we developed, uh, a couple of them uh, actually had uh, uh, maintained their effect against both enzymes, and they had effects on both the uh, metastatic behavior and the growth behavior of the cancer. So what this shows is the combination of drugs and a new chemical entity has effects on the key pathways of, of this cancer. The other thing is we, we see this uh, a molecule um, as one that can have synergistic effects with other current therapies. Uh, we, we um, as I'll say a little bit later, we, we found that it had relatively low toxicity, and uh, because of its effect on therapy resistance, we felt that its main role would be to work with other agents to promote their effects. So these are experiments that you see in this slide showing that if you use um, radiation or chemotherapy, that if you use um, AP001 alone, which is in red, or uh, radiation on the one side, or, or gemcitabine, a chemotherapeutic agent on the other side, you get a small effect. But when we combine them, we get a synergistic effect. Uh, so, so this shows that we have a, a synergism that we uh, started to uh, look at in animal models and cell culture models, which this slide re represents. So in the left-hand side, we have um, um, an animal model that we show a, a, a surgical uh, operation on, but um, the point of that slide is that when we uh, did a, um, a clinical trial in, in mice with genetic form of pancreatic cancer, what we found is that compared to those who received vehicle, those that received our agent 
uh, had uh, zero metastatic lesions, where with the controlled treatment, there were 29% of the animals had metastatic lesions. So that was one uh, point of efficacy. Another point uh, is seen on the a bar graph. So we, we are able to uh, obtain circulating tumor cells from patients with pancreatic cancer and grow them in culture. Um, and then we can use those to test our therapeutics. And what we uh, see in the bar graph is that um, compared to control or vehicle treated, uh, there is a very high, uh, high sensitivity and potency of the agent to decrease survival of those circulating cancer cells grown in culture. So you can see an effect at 150 nanomolar. Uh, importantly, we find that gemcitabine has no effect on these uh, circulating tumor cells. In other words, they're resistant to a common chemotherapeutic agent, and, uh, and this agent has an effect. And as I indicated before in the previous slide, our agent synergizes with gemcitabine. The uh, other, uh, other uh, uh, kind of cell we use, is, uh, as you see in the last bar graph, is, uh, is a human cell line, BXPC3, and you can see it has an effect there as well as other uh, cancer cell lines. In our uh, clinical trials using the agent alone to look at survival, we find that it extends survival uh, without the other drugs. In other words, we're just looking at its, its characteristics on survival alone. And the uh, survival curve here shows that the uh, agent compared to control extends survival. And importantly, uh, when um, all the patients, uh, uh, all the mice, mice patients, are, uh, ha have died um, uh, w with control treatment, their 42% are still alive in the uh, um, treatment with our agent. And even more importantly, at the time of death uh, at autopsy, the weight of tumor was significantly less in the uh, animals that had received treatment. And as I indicated before, those animals had no metastasis. And then uh, finally, this is without another drug. It's, it's not showing the synergism, and those experiments are currently going on. Finally, um, there, there are significant interest in the immune characteristics of, of pancreatic cancer. That is that the immune, the, the cancer actually in, uh, inhibits the immune surveillance process that can attack uh, the, the cancers. And so we look at markers of the immune system to give us some insight whether this agent uh, would have effects on the immune system. And what you see in the, in the bar graph on the left is this um, uh, treatment in the animals that I just showed you actually significantly decreases what are called M2 macrophages. So M2 macrophages are thought to be the pro-cancer pro macrophages, so it significantly decreases those. Furthermore, in the circulation, we measured various cytokines that are associated with the disease uh, and poor outcome, like IL-6, IL-4, IL-10, IL-5, and it significantly decreased the level of these in the blood of the animals uh, at the time of death, uh, uh, which is a, a very good sign that it's having a significant effect. So now I'm going to have uh, Terry talk about management and our plans. Thank you, Steve. Uh, the company's been in existence now for eight months. Uh, we put a manager together of very experienced uh, people who are uh, serving as consultants and some as uh, full-time employees. We have a virtual company model to keep costs very low. Uh, we've been granted orphan drug status in the U.S. Uh, for this compound and expect to receive the same kind of designation in Europe uh, before the end of the year. Uh, we've done a selection of all the vendors to produce the active pharmaceutical ingredient, the formulation, an oral drug product, and uh, all of the uh, pharmacokinetics and uh, animal testing uh, so that we're ready to move uh, when we've completed our financing. We would expect to be able to be in first and patient studies in about 12 to 18 months from funding. Uh, we're going to do those studies, the initial studies, at Cedar sinai because they see almost uh, 500 pancreatic cancer patients a year, and we believe our phase one trials will be roughly 30 patients long. So we're in the process of uh, raising $5 million, which will take us through a phase one clinical trial. We'll follow that with an institutional round that's likely to be in the 10 to 15 million which will take us through uh, our phase two, phase two B. At that point in time, we intend to either partner or sell this compound to a major pharmaceutical company. 
and we would expect an exit something in the three to four years from funding uh, stage. So thank you.